All right. So remember chapter seven was you had kind of one sample and we were testing it. Now uh, it might have been a big sample, but now what if we have kind of two separate uh, samples? And so that's why they call it a two sample Z test. Uh, what we're looking for is the difference, though. It's really important that we're really looking for the difference. between two population means. That's really what we're looking for. So you might want to highlight that. Uh, when a large sample, again, that means at least 30. Uh, so the first sample could be 60. The second sample could be 100. They don't even have to be the same. Uh, but what we want is they want them to at least be 30, randomly selected from each population. But again, here, the samples well, that didn't work very well. Oh, there we go. I need to save it first. There. They need to be independent. I kind of showed you that with a picture yesterday. There's one amoeba-looking thing over here, and one amoeba-looking thing over there, and you take your sample from each one. They don't have anything in common. Uh, the test statistic here, then, is obviously uh, what's the difference between the sample mean of one versus the sample mean of the other one. That's the, probably the best we can do, because we're not going to get the entire sample. So that's what we're going to find, and the standardized test statistic statistic is where the formulas get a little bit much. So, whoops. First, you don't want to do that. And then second, there is your standardized. Now, standardized means we're going to compare it to something that's standard, which is our normal curve. Right? That's kind of where we're going to come up with that. So it is the difference between the sample means, and that's why it's x1 and x2. I'm assuming you knew that with the subscript. And then we're going to subtract uh, the actual population means, but normally that's going to be zero right there, that part. Not always, and that's why I show it to you now, but a lot of times that will just be zero. We're going to kind of hypothesize, oh, they're the same, this one's bigger. It still doesn't matter. We're pretty much going to say that that's zero. Over the standard deviation of the two means, but that's something we haven't done either. We haven't actually done that bottom part yet. And so that also has a formula in this case. And so yeah, the formulas get a little bit more complicated. So yes, again, we will learn how to do them by hand so that they make sense. And then we will most definitely let the calculators help us out a little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Again, that just means they're from different samples is all that means. Uh, and then over there, you know, it's at sigma squared, right? Does that make sense how I wrote that? That this is sigma squared from the first one, and this is sigma squared from the second one. So in other words, those are both talking about variance, right? And then n1 is however many we had from the first one, and n2 is however many we had from the second one. Okay. So basically, we take variance divided by n, variance divided by n, and then kind of add them together. And that's actually really close to what you've been doing before anyways. We've been taking standard deviation divided by the square root of n, right? But now we have to add them together before we take that square root, right? Because the square root of, what's that one people always get wrong? The square root of 16 plus 9 is not 7, right? Square root, people get that wrong all the time. They take the square root separately and then add them together. Okay, where obviously the answer there would be 5, right? So we have to add them together first, then take the square root. But again, remember when the samples are large, uh, it is okay to use S1 and S2. I kind of covered it up there. If you don't know the actual variance. Because what are the chances we know the actual variance? Slim. And if we knew the actual variance, we'd probably already know the actual mean and wouldn't have to compare them anyways, right? And so we're going to be using S a lot. Uh, if the samples are not large, um, you can still actually use it provided they're normally distributed and you know the population standard deviation. But again, the chances of that are also pretty slim. If you're actually doing something that's going to mean something, that's pretty slim if you're actually going to be comparing it. Okay, so Because you want to be able to use all sample information. That's the whole idea of these tests. Okay, Well, might as well just dive in and try one and, and see if we can figure out where everything fits in here. Uh, so there's an executive out there that claims that there is a difference in the mean household income for credit card holders of Visa Gold versus MasterCard Gold. 
Okay, so apparently one of them, people maybe spend a little more, right? The average is a little higher or a little less, whatever. Uh, the results of a random survey of 100 customers from each group are shown. The two samples are independent. It was actually pretty important for them to say that. Because some people would say, well, aren't they independent anyways? Well, could you have both a MasterCard Gold and a Visa Gold? You could have both, right? And according to this, do you think that they asked those particular people that had both? No, they stayed away from that idea, right? But it is possible. But they're saying that they did a very good job, and they made sure that they were independent. And that's important. If they hadn't, well, we'd have to do something different. Right? And so do the results support the executive's claim? And our alpha or our probability there is 0.05. The hardest part when you first start these is getting the null and alternate. Anybody think they know? I mean, that's I truly believe to get started is really the hardest. Once you kind of get rolling, it's not that bad. They claim that there is a difference. So in other words, the two means are not equal, right? So we're going to say down here that mu1 and mu2 are not the same, right? Isn't that what that says? So that, very good, is your claim. And let's face it, we're very smart. We, we should have known that's where the claim was, right? Because of how many of these we've done. And so then up here it is. Right? So what are we looking at here? One tail, two tail, right tail, left tail? Yeah, that's two tail, right? Because we got that not equal to. All righty. I don't know if I put those in here or not. Well, we'll come back to it. So we're going to kind of do the same thing, but we got to go get that z-score. Hmm, that's going to get interesting. But before, I think I put them on here somewhere, but whatever. We'll go back. What I do first is this. I figure out that first so that I can just substitute it in there on the bottom, okay? And so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to make that a little smaller first, though, before I move it. Oop, it's over there. Right, so let's do that first. Do I know the variance? No. But do I know S? Oh, yeah, I know that. Oh, well, that's good. So let's go ahead and find this thing first. So this, what am I looking for here? What is this really? This is the standard deviation, right? Big old square root. Well, here's sample one is Visa Gold, apparently, and sample two is MasterCard. We just kind of named them that way, right? And so we have to take 12,000 and square it over 100. Notice here N1 and N2 are the same. They don't have to be, but we started off kind of straightforward. And then over here we got 15,000 square root over 100. So let's go ahead and figure that out first. Because we need to know what a standard deviation is before we can figure out how many standard deviations out we are, right? You need to figure out what one of them is before you can do anything else. Let's go ahead and use your calculator. I'll let you do that. And we'll see if we all come to the same number. And if not, we'll work on our calculator skills. Realizing you do have the same denominator, you can just you know, add the numerators and then divide by 100 in this case, right? You don't have to do it separately. No, just go ahead and do the whole thing. So we'll just round. So let's round to the nearest digit, I guess, for that. 1,921? I'm assuming you just missed a zero in there somewhere. And let's face it, looking at these numbers, we should be suspicious of one standard deviation only being $192 as well, right? We should look at those and say, well, wait a minute, it's probably a little bit more than that, right? Um, especially seeing our standard you know, deviation on each one is kind of big, right? Only 192, when I put them together, I don't think so, right? Um, and so that means that, that you know, if I went that far each way, I'd get about 64% of the information, right? 
And so that's what one standard deviation is. And once we've been figuring that out, what really have we been doing? Well, we've been saying, let's find out how far our sample is from what we want it to be. And then we'll divide by what one standard deviation is, because then that'll tell us how many standard deviations out it is. Right? That makes sense. How far out are we? And then divide by what one standard deviation is, and it'll tell us how many out we are. And so let's go ahead and do that. And that is this other formula, which says basically what's the difference between the sample means and subtract the actual means, but do we know the actual means? No, so we're going to say 0 and 0, and so pff, gone. Right? So really all we got to do is this first one, x1, x2. Yeah, you just basically we're saying they're equal anyway, so u1 minus u2 is is zero, all right? And so we got x1, which is, wow, it's a big number. They're spending a lot of money, huh? I mean, oh, that's how much their household income. I didn't read that very well, did I? And do you agree that right there is the difference? Because mu1, mu, one, mu you know, that's could be nothing, right? And what would you get just for that number? That's not too hard. What's that? And it'd be, by the way I wrote it. Yeah, I'm just waiting. Still waiting. Well, actually, the way that is, it'd be... Yeah, it doesn't really matter because this is two-tailed, right? It doesn't matter if that's positive or negative, right? Divided by. And now, why? really, why are we doing that? If you can understand why we're doing that, it's going to make these formulas so much easier. Yeah, basically, that's how far out it is. 5,620, right? And one standard deviation, is that actually what it is, though? It seems high. Oh, that's why mine's different. Oh, I have a different number in there. No wonder. All right, so we're not going to read that one anymore. All right, we'll do this one. So is that going to be a lot of standard deviations? Because one standard deviation is 1,900. So it's about around three-ish somewhere, right? And so what is our actual value here for... So what is it? 2.92. All right, so now here's where I'm really going to start to make you kind of figure out, okay, what's going on here. It's two tails. Two point, yeah, and so we're 2.92. That's out there a ways, isn't it? That's a lot of standard deviations out. So the chances of this is probably not very good. And, and so alpha is 0 0.05, right? <laughs> Somebody's already said that critical value. So we're trying to find out where can I reject? And if it's 0 0.05, that means two and a half there, two and a half there, right? Two and a half there, two and a half there. Hmm? And so what are those critical values? 1.96. Again, it's, it is very helpful to know those numbers, isn't it? It speeds this process up, right? And so what do you think? We're at 2.92. Yeah, that's like way, that's like out there somewhere, isn't it? Okay, so can I reject the null. Yeah, I can reject the null, and I can support the claim. Now, let's see if that makes sense in just looking at the numbers. The one mean was quite a bit larger than the other, wasn't it? About 5,600 larger than the other. Agreed? And if we look at these standard deviations, if we look at them together, those, those are pretty big. And so when we kind of put the two samples together, it comes out to only being 1,921. when we put the two samples together, and so that was going to be out there a ways. Okay, yes? We did. But we knew mu1 minus mu2 was zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just We assumed that these two were zero. We used this one over here that we have boxed right now. That's how we found our standard deviation of the samples how about we, that's how we found the standard deviation of the difference of the means. That's why the number is smaller. 
because you see how that's where some people get confused. Wait, standard deviation there is 15,000, standard deviation there is 12,000. How is my standard deviation of the two put together only that? Well, we're saying the standard deviation of the difference of the means is that. So does that make sense to be smaller? Yeah, the difference. That's kind of saying I kind of subtracted them and put them all together. So the difference is going to be a much smaller standard deviation, which is why I, when I compare it to the actual difference, it got so big for a z-score. And so then, yeah, well out there. And in fact, there's not too many alphas that wasn't going to allow us to reject this type, right? I could have gone even to 0.01 and I still would have rejected. Okay. So this executive claims that there is a difference. So do you agree? Yeah, I can support that. I have evidence that supports that. And that was pretty big. Okay. So this one's a little bit different. It says uh, the auto association claims that the average daily cost for meals and lodging when vacationing in Texas is less than the same average cost when vacationing in Washington state. The table below shows the results of a survey of vacationers in each state. At alpha equals 0.01, is there enough evidence to support the claim? One thing they kind of, the ends are different. What's one thing I really emphasized in the last one? I even highlighted and then made a really big green streak the wrong way. Yeah, the independence of that last one. But here it's two different states. So could you find your average cost for this one and find your average cost for that one and are they gonna be two different numbers? Yeah, so is it really truly still? It is still is, right? Okay. The, why couldn't we worry, really do that on the last one? Well, if you spend money on one card, you probably spend money on the other card too, right? And so then you're going to really throw off the numbers, aren't you, if you're spending on both cards? So that, that's why they, they kind of work with that. But anyways, the table below shows the results of a survey. Ooh, 0 0.01. Wait a minute, we got to support the claim again? Hmm. Well, let's see if we can write these. Because based on that, we're... Where should the claim be? In the alternate. Hmm. Well, we know when we're doing this, we're really comparing the population means. And if you can keep that straight, you're okay, I think. That's what we're trying to compare. And our alternate is basically saying mu2, which is Washington, right? Everybody see that? That this is mu1, that's mu2, right? Is Washington. We want to make that one Texas has to be less than, right? So mu1 better be less than, so basically Texas less than Washington, right? That's what it's saying. And that's where your claim is. So then this must be greater than or equal to, and which of those are we going to focus on, the greater than or the equal to? We're going to focus on and use the fact that it might be equal to, because then mu1 minus mu2 is the zero, because we don't know them anyways, all right? Are there times that maybe we will? Well, maybe. We'll have to see. All right. Hopefully, I have the same numbers this time. All right. Awesome. And I have nobody to blame but myself because I typed up these notes. So, All right. What are we, what's the first thing that we notice? Well, first thing I notice. Numbers are a little bit closer this time, huh? So, hmm, we'll have to see. Left tail, there you go. That's good, right? So do you want to go get the critical score first or you want to go get the actual number first? What do you want to do? Actual number? All right, so we're going to go and find, remember what I like to do first. Let's find out what that bad boy is. And remember, it's kind of that square root. You have to add them together first. And so S over here is about 15. But don't forget to square it because you need variance over... 50, and somebody already mentioned that these ends are different, right? And so we can't do that common denominator thing we did last time. So, And so this, again, if you can keep straight what this is, you're going to help yourself out. This is the standard deviation of the difference. It is plus, right? Yeah, you have to add the two together. Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, 
And so are we expecting this to be more than 15, less than 15, what? Yeah, probably less, because we're talking about the difference here, right? Five point, yeah, we probably should go out a little bit further on this one because it's a smaller number, huh? So 5.2, I mean, small, further than we went last time. So we went out to the whole digit last time. But yeah, we probably better go out a little bit more this time. 5.2, yeah. So we'll just do a little approximate 5.2 there, right? Again, what does that mean? That means one standard deviation is 5.2. So now we got to find out how far out are we so we can divide by what one of them is so we can find out how many out are we. All right. So then we got to go and do our Z. And so we're going to you know, subtract, right? And, hmm, how should I say it? Um, well, we're kind of trying to say that this one's less, right? So we are going to take the 184 minus the 195 and see what happens. And hopefully, hopefully it's negative, right? If it's supposed to be less, it better be, right? If it's positive, well, then we know somebody made a really bad coin, okay? And so 184 minus 195 over your 5.2. And I'm hoping you're thinking back to some of the old ones being like, oh, that's what we were doing. We were dividing by that Z to find how much Z's it was. Because uh, some people get too bogged down in the formulas. And we get what? So approximately negative 2.12. Oh, that's out there a ways too, isn't it, huh? But do we have anything to compare it to yet? No, we haven't found where our rejection region is yet. And so out here, it's a left tail. Somebody already told me that. I need to have 1%. All 1% has to be out there, right? So my critical, it's definitely negative, right? Because it's left tailed. But boy, that's 99% over here, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? Wow. Uh, um, yeah, that's for two-tailed. I believe it's negative 2.33. Yeah. Right, because half of, it's, it's one, when you do 99%, you split it to half. Yeah, that's when it's the 2.575, when you have half here, half there, right? But at least you knew it was negative two points off. That's good. So that's where we want it to land in there, right? In that green shaded region. And it lands, ooh, yeah, it's just short, right? It's close. It's close, because you gotta remember the biggest thing, and this is the thing that some don't get, is that what's here? That's, yeah, that's zero, right? And so there's your negatives, okay? And so, ooh, not quite on that one, so I can't quite support the claim. And why do you suppose that is? Look at the numbers. Yeah, they're pretty close, but what's really the actual number that really makes this the 28? Very good. The standard deviation on Washington is too, too big because that allows you to get past that 184, doesn't it? You know what I mean? And then also that 15, really, you notice how that 15 doesn't even get you to the 195? So it's looking pretty good at that point, and then all of a sudden, boom, 28. Uh-oh. Now, is it possible because it was only a sample of 35? Yeah, but still, 35 is pretty good. Remember, we say 30 is kind of that cutoff between pretty good and, well, a little questionable, right? And so, yeah, maybe if there was a little bit more, maybe this number would have changed a little bit. Okay, but yeah, that 28 is really the one that you're like, whoa, wait a minute. Maybe not, right? Yeah, and then think about that. You turn around then in your formula, square that to give it even more power, and only divide it by the 35 to give it more power, then you, you, know, so you see how that makes a big difference. So had this been maybe, say, 20 even, okay, we would have said, well, maybe, right? We would have said, there's a, there's a possibility. Why would that have worked? Because this number right here would have been smaller, and then this would have made that number bigger. You see how that all works together? So then you could support at that point, because if you only had 20, maybe you'd be able to. Okay, that's how I want you to think through these. Okay, do you have any questions? Okay. All right, cool. Well, we have time. Why don't we just do 20 and see what happens? Let's do that quick. Do a uh, standard deviation of 2 as 20. Let's see if we can. I think it should be, should be enough, right, if we think about it? Should, well, maybe not, but it should be close. It should be a lot closer, right? If we do 20 there instead. 
because we don't quite get to that 184. You shouldn't necessarily 100% think of that because we do have 15 coming this way, right? <laughs> so they are kind of working together. So let's just go ahead and change that to 20. Let's see how it changes it. And have fun with numbers and change it around. Play with the numbers. What is it? So four, should we just use four? You know, we're, we're, we're close here, right? And so then remember what that changes is that number, which then changes that number. It's still negative though, right? But does it change it enough? Oh, does, where are we at then? Negative 2, 2.75. Uh-oh, now we're over here. Now we can support. But can you look back at these original numbers and see maybe why it now does support? Remember, you do have kind of 15 going that way, and I only got 20 going that way for one standard deviation, right? Once you start going two or three standard deviations, not much happens in there, right? That, that's a small probability. So these two are working towards each other, so I would say, yeah, I, I would believe that one. But at 28, maybe not. Okay. So any questions? No? All right. See, that didn't take long to play with that number. Let's see what happens. Especially if you still had the stuff up on your calculator and just brought it back up, right?